a great moment to uh, introduce again Alejandro Beltran. Uh, he's almost uh, part of the Eco Roads exhibition family, the, the two families. And thanks Alejandro, Ricardo Mar, uh, Dan Davis, we have the Cusco Mutual Model, everybody enjoying, everybody admiring in our exhibit. Right now, Alejandro will talk about Cusco and the water management of Cusco. And the next place for me to introduce Alejandro, please welcome Alejandro and join with me to say welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you uh, Ramiro, Jose Barreiro, and all of the people who have opened this space that I can share with you the experience that we are, uh, the line of work we are w in, in which I, we are working on in Tarragona, in Spain. Uh, we start with the case of Cusco, and I think this is a case you know uh, very well since you have that amazing exhibition at the museum. But that Cusco experience makes part of a some kind of big frame of work that we are trying to introduce in our work in Tarragona, that is the approaches to water, for the conversations on native engineering in the Americas. I think this is a very um, amazing case because you find all around America different experiences around water management and how those cultures, those ancient cultures found the way to improve or to change the, more than improve, change the environment in order to settle in very different and sometimes extreme conditions. So uh, first of all, I think there is very important to think about how the study about settlements in ancient America has been, or have, I'm sorry, has been, maybe, has been uh, made since the studies, uh, the cultural studies in the context of uh, the academic studies. Uh, we have two approximations that are, are, the first one is more related with the theories of, for instance, Gordon Child about the urban uh, revolution. And the other one is related with the Wittfogel uh, approach to water uh, management societies. So I think uh, those, or we think that those approaches that were taken or that were based on cases from the, from the um, Middle East or in the case of India or the case of China, those cases were trying to be introduced in the debate about social um, or the m social um, water management in America or the settlements in America. But we find that those approaches are a little bit uh, mm, difficult to apply in the case of the Americas because here, the societies have other ways to approach to nature and other ways, other social ways to manage those big works they did in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cases I'm going to show you. So uh, this is the first thing we have to think about how the study of settlements in America has been done until now and how the ethno-historical studies are changing this approach since I'm going to talk about the case of Peru, for instance. It's possible that not just big state, um, state uh, apparels or big state, uh, mm, uh, yes, big state uh, societies have produced those amazing things, but maybe was extend families, little groups of people, which construct and maintain those structures and they were a link of different families together building, constructing, or maintaining those structures, not just a big um, estate which ordered people to build those structures. So this is one different. This is one thing to. Th this is one thing to uh, to think about. And the other one is the ecology in America and in Europe. Since we work in Europe, since our experience is more about how archaeology is 
uh, how, what is the approach of archaeology in Europe, uh, we have to think about and study how archaeology is a study here in America. In America, the approach is more related with anthropology, with ethnohistory, and uh, the frame, the general frame in which the architecture, for instance, is studied here in America, is more thinking about architecture as a general frame of how societies develop or general frame how societies um, um, had that a scale of that hierarchy, hierarchical scale, um, substructs in, in, the, in their uh, political uh, systems. There in Europe we have a different approach to architecture because uh, the world of archaeology was developed from the history of art and the architecture itself. So archaeology is more related with the uh, study of the building and its materiality, its constructive issues. Is, uh, it, uh, and this is why we want, when we study architecture s from the archaeology, uh, we try to make those reconstructions, those, those reconstructions about that, uh, arch that, that architecture because we think this is the way we can understand better that how that society works. So those are different approaches to architecture from one or the other side of Atlantic. But I think it's very important to understand that all those are complementary or should be com complementary ways to see archaeology. And the third thing is the today situation. Now that I have the chance to talk to people to other places uh, here in DC, maybe other places here in the United States, uh, this is something that we have to think about because that technology, not just the communication technology, but the way we approach to different um, aspects of architecture in the case of archaeology is going to help us to develop new instruments to understand how architecture or how archaeology in the case of architecture is going to help us to understand better the societies. So uh, in this general frame I have five, uh, five photographs uh, that illustrate different environments in which American societies, native societies, develop their strategies um, co in complete uh, union or <coughs> understanding with that environmental situations. The first one is, this one is a Chaco Canyon photograph, uh, and this one is the uh, Caspa Valley in Peru. And this one is the first experience I'm going to talk about, that is the, the experience of how people in the deserts or the semi-desertic -desert areas develop strategies to manage water. The second one is, this is just an example, this is the case of the, uh, the, uh, the flood plains in Senu, in the Senu culture, in the coast, in the Caribbean coast, Colombian Caribbean coast. And the third is this one that is the context of the mountains of South America. This is Teyuna, this is in the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta by the Caribbean Sea. And this is Pisac in the Sacred Valley in Cusco region. So here we have this map and we show you and we mark, I think we're trying to show just some experiences, but I think the, the most, the, the well-known experiences, that first of all is this experience in the southwest of the United States and the, and the northwest of Mexico. Uh, the second is the Valley of Mexico, the, where Tenochtitlan was settled, now Mexico City. The Maya experience around Water II, the Senu Valley here in that place in the Colombian Caribbean coast. The, the fifth is the Barinas Valley, the, the flu plains in the, in the plains of Venezuela. This one is uh, Guayas, um, Guayas and Delta in the Guayas River in Ecuador. Of course, the experience in the desert of South and of Peru and the Caribbean and the, sorry, the Indian experience. And this one is the Titicaca River. I haven't marked this one, but this is related to this place that is Mojos in Bolivia, that is a plane flu too. So I'm going to talk about those examples. This is a general uh, geographical mark of where these experiences are located. I'm going to talk about uh, these, uh, ex these experiences in those three cases. First, 
the coastal deserts in Peru on the lands of the southwest of the, of the United States. The second is going to be the flood plains and the, la um, the, la and the lagoon or lake uh, settlements. And the third is the mountains in South America. Okay, this first one, this first one I got those two pictures. Those, those are two different valleys that illustrate very well the situation of the uh, valleys in the coast, in the desert coast of Peru. Those are valleys which, had, uh, which have constant, constant rivers, constant flow of, 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 of water, constant rivers, which create some kind of oasis, lineal, uh, lineal oasis from the mountains to the uh, Pacific Ocean. It crosses the desert and it creates these this, uh, this, um, oases that, for instance, in this case, this is the Supe Valley where Caral is settled. So we are talking here of one strategy around water that allowed to irrigate a lot of surface for, uh, for growing crops and then create those amazing uh, structures that were linked to the ceremonies around the agricultural cycles of uh, the, uh, around the agricultural cycles. This is other experience. The same in the south. This is the this is the is it, this is in Peru too, but in the south. This is the Nazca culture with which developed this sort of of. Um, I think you have heard more about canats. That is something. In the, in the north of Africa, for instance, that is very well used. Those are filtering galleries. This is a scheme how our sketch and sketch how those filtering galleries work. Uh, what it happens is you have the phreatic level. This phreatic level goes from the mountains to the ocean. And what they do is on the base of the mountain, they build those channels, those uh, underground channels to, by capillarity, take the water, cap the water here, take the water, and take it to this place like uh, called Cocha, that is some kind of reservoir that should be one, uh, should be those, those, uh, those holes that allowed two people go down and take the water from, from those, from those uh, subterranean channels. So here we have this experience and up in the north of Peru, in, this, in the Lambayeque zone that is related with Moche culture, we have those amazing channels built to irrigate great zones of this, of this valley. This is a map. This is the Lambayeque, this is the Reque River, the Lambayeque River, and those are two huge channels built to take the water from the top of, from up of the river and irrigate all those zones of the desert. Uh, there are uh, studies which said that not even today it has been recovered the amount of land the people, the ancient people in this place were allowed to make produce. Not even here that amount of land has been recovered. Not even here we can produce so much food like they did that time before. So this is amazing how they, and this is something that I want to remark in all this talk, is not, is not we are not talking about that they don't touch the natural environment, we are not talking about that they don't uh, make changes in the dynamics of the environment, but why they try as hard as, as they could was not to break with the equilibrium of that natural environment because they know that if they break with that equilibrium it could be disaster it could be disastrous for for them uh, in this case uh, in this specific case they divert or they took a lot of water from the top of this river and took and create all these this system that crosses this plane in this specific case so we are talking about huge structures which crosses the which crosses the desert and now we go up, we, go, we come here to the United States, the Southwest, and we find that they have to, uh, to, um, to um, create strategies related with how they could uh, take advantage of the situation where they were settled. 
This is uh, Chaco Canyon, this is Hoven Whip, and of course Mesa Verde. This is the, this is the region where it is settled, Chaco Basin here, uh, Hoven Whip must be more or less in this place in the four corners, and uh, Mesa Verde more or less in this place. So what we have is they, they have the same, situ more or less the same situation like in the Andes, they have that big system of mountains from where rivers come down to the Pacific Ocean, to the Pacific Ocean, and they have those continuous uh, stream of waters that they took advantage of that. They took the water and they use uh, they use it uh, building channels. So this is Chaco Canyon. This is the situation right now. We know well that this situation is completely different from from the moment where where peop where Chaco Canyon people were settled here. It was much more green than now, much more greener than now. Those are the structures in Chaco Canyon. But something that is very amazing and talks and, and tells us a lot about how they decide to uh, stay in this place is because they took profit of the waters that uh, were filtered from the top of those mesas. Those are the mesas and down they have, you, you can see those little squares. Well, those little squares are that kind of gardens. They, they, they built that kind of grilled gardens and they took the water that was filtered from the top of the mesa, they channeled this water and then irrigate this grill using this technology. So this, that was one way they used water from the top of the mesa. Of course they have, and this is pretty amazing too, that now in Navajo people is, uh, are using a similar technology, but in this case they take water from this river and irrigate in the same way some kind of, of grill, a grill way. They, they, they um, irrigate this plain to produce, uh, to produce crops. I think in this case is maybe is corn. So this technology continue, is continue working. They have they are continue working with this with this uh, technology of using water in uh, and irrigating this this field uh, of crops. And here you have Huben Whip. They build those structures in some cases related with the place where the water filter at the, uh, the top of the mesa goes out. They use in some cases those uh, structures to indicate where the water was or where to protect the place where the water was. And we're going to see that in a very much, in a very good extension in the case of Mesa Verde. Because uh, something that we wonder is why maybe they use those huge rocks or um, shelter rocks or to build those, those structures. And it's because the water that is filtered from the top of the mesa comes out in those places down. And they, what they did was to protect those places and to build a settlement around the place where the water comes from. So this is the case, this is a cliff palace. Those are the structures. And in this case, this is what they did to uh, use water, sorry. This is something important to say. This is not exactly related with water, but it talks about how the, the, the natural environment and the landscape was uh, key to understand the relationships between the different settlements in this geography. Here we have Aztec, here we are near from the border between New Mexico and Colorado. And if we go down, if you see this, this is the Mexican and, and the US border. So we are talking about a very, very, very long projection. We have this here, we continue here in this place, and this is a large projection of different places linked by different uh, geographical events. So we are talking about here just about, not just about this, this parallel that, that unite different, different settlements or geographical um, um, landmarks, but we're talking about that the experiences around water, the, experi the cultural experiences were part of a, of a large geographic unit uh, that is still, uh, we really think that is still 
in process to be in a study about the relationships between all these people around those experiences in water. This is another experience. This is the Hohokam experience. I forget to say that the last experience was more related with the so-called Anasazi people. This one is related to the Hohokam people. And this is in Phoenix, in Arizona. Uh, some of those challenges have been lost because the city has been spread on uh, around, well, over those, th this system <coughs> channel. But what we see is this uh, amazing uh, uh, amount of channels uh, that they built to irrigate those, uh, those plains. And here we have the size of the channels they dig to uh, produce this amazing network of channels in this, in this specific place. Then uh, we're going to change to, all the, to the second environmental uh, scenario. We are talking about the lake or the floodplain uh, flood um, zones. Here we have, we're talking about this place specifically, that is the Noxitlan, of course, I think is a very well-known place, but it's very important to see that the technology used that time before is in completely used now. They are using that technology now. This is the Senu experience. Barinas in Venezuela. Uh, I'm going to talk this in, in like Titicaca and a little bit of mojos, just some images to uh, to talk about you about this. Uh, this is an, this is uh, the studies about um, food, uh, about raised fields, that, uh, that is the technology that is used in this specific case. Uh, they have, uh, they, 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 the studies ha is hard, uh, are trying to make a classification about the kind of uh, strategies used in its form in each case specifically. Here we have the case of Tenochtitlan. Those are, this is more or less the mm, scenario that the Spanish people uh, saw when they arrived to this place. This is, uh, this is pretty amazing because this island is really, uh, this is, that was a natural island that they uh, expand using this technology of the chinampas, the, the so-called chinampas. And the chinampas is, a, is, is one special thing because it's different from the race, from the race fields in it, it itself. It's a different technology in some way, but it works uh, more or less in the same way that race fields. So what I mean is what they do is to take uh, the soil from the, from the, from the mm, bottom of the, of the lake and they uh, fool those kind of big bags surrounded by those sticks here and those trees and they uh, do those field, uh, those field, um, race fields in some way using this technology that now we have, well, this is a Maya codex that, use it, that exemplifies very well that they not just um, crop fields here, but they have this uh, uh, fishing um, experience around those field crops. Well, this is a, this is a codex, a Maya, a Maya codex talking about the eagle, how it settled in this place to uh, the foundation of the of Tenochtitlan. This is the situation of Tenochtitlan, more or less where the Spanish arrived. This is the this is the island, natural island that was expanded using the technology of the chinampas. This is another image which exemplifies very well how they use those trees to, from the roots of those trees, try to keep all that soil together. And this is the situation today. This is in the Xochimilco Park. We have, we can, we can, we have this image and then we have this because that image is uh, from, the, from the 20, from the maybe the 20th of the, 20 of the, of the 20th century. And the city has expanded. This is the f maybe 40s. And this is the experience right now where people is still growing crops in those race fields using the same technology that was used before by the ancestors. We go down, we go to South America. This is a case of Lake Titicaca. They're trying to recover the technology of the Waru Waru that they raised fields in itself, its own definition. And we can see here the different strategies 
formally strategies they use to create those race fields. This is a, a satellite image of ancient race fields in the zone of the Titica of the Titicaca um, Lake. And this is one experience trying to recover this technology because we are going to see how it works and is it works in this way. So we have that this technology of raised fields really works in those three special conditions. When you have rain period, the, the, the water that comes from here, it goes to the, it goes to the, to those channels. It, it, it could be evacuated to those channels during the drought period. It could be, it could use, the water could be by, fil by filtration, could irrigate those field crops. And there is something I'm going to explain with the next image, how it works in the, in the, cane, in the case of snow flurries. You know the late Titicaca is so up that the difference on in, in temperature between day and night is so, so big that uh, the crops could be burned by the ice during the night. So what, how or what they, uh, what those uh, race fields work, it, it, what it do is that they take, the water takes the heat during the day and then during the night they <coughs> expose that heat and in some way creates uh, a way to cover, creates an, a, 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 a little uh, specific condition to doesn't, to don't allow this uh, uh, cold uh, weather burns the, the field crops here. So it's a very sophisticated technology. It was just thinking about how the water works. They know well how the water works. They know well how the filtration could be in different, ta in different ways. And even more, they understand that if they continue, if they don't break the system equilibrium, they can keep growing not just these uh, plants, but continue with the fishing in the lake. This is a very similar condition that happened here. Here we are not in that high, in that um, different, in that in that different situation of, of, of weather. This is the plains of uh, of Colombia in the Caribbean Ocean, so we have more or less the same temperature. But what happens here and in the next cases I'm going to talk about is they have a very very heavy rainy seasons, so they have to develop a way to uh, drainage the excess of water from these plains. These plains have a, uh, a very specific condition too, is that uh, two uh, rivers, San Juan and Cauca River, comes to this place and brings a lot of water from the mountains. So this is why those plains uh, um, get flood uh, during the, the rainy season. You can see here, this unfortunately, the, the huge amount of land Senu people transformed to create all those structures uh, have, uh, have not had continuity uh, in time. You know, Spanish system is different. They have uh, a lot of extensive, um, I'm gonna say that, cows, because I don't know how can I say ganaderia. Cattle. Cattle? Okay, extensive cattle and extensive agriculture too. So these, fields, these race fields doesn't really uh, uh, suit to the new system uh, bring by the Spanish people. So, but we have here, we have here the, 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 um, the, the prince of the, uh, the uh, oh God, las uh, huellas. The, the footprints? No, the tracks, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the tracks of the system created by them. As far as you can see, you have here how these, how those race fields conduct water to this, to this channel built to evacuate those waters. Here you have this, this is a very complex system of channels, of race fields, and here you have, I bring this again because we can see that this is, this is not just a linear system, but in some cases it was it was created in this way. Here, for instance, this is, a, this is a, a channel that is not really in service right now, but we have here the track of this channel. Here we have uh, some kind of little monticulos or mountain that was created to, uh, to build the sediments in this place. 
Here you have the same, this is, a, this is an artificial channel built to evacuate water. And those are those mountains built to uh, put the sediments on, of, on, on over them. So here I have, we, are we would like to talk more about, for instance, the experience in Barinas in Venezuela, but we have no much inform no, not a lot of information of this. This is one race field in this place. And this is, for instance, in Mojos in Bolivia. This is uh, an experience very near from the Amazoni, Amazonian, yes. This is, this is the situation of this experience. This is Mojos. And those are the, uh, are the race fields that, have that they are trying to recover again that technology in, that in the case of, of, of Bolivia. But those are the tracks of the ancient race fields that were found once the Amazonian was uh, deforest. So as far as we can see, the Amazonian is a relatively new system that uh, is covering different experiences of water management and race field in the case of, uh, of um, Bolivia. This case is in the Guyanas. I'm going to show you later an image how or why people think or, or researchers think that this was the way that people settled here. Race fields too, where they have, they, they make, they raise the, their crops. And this is the platform that they found in this, in this um, research that allows them to propose the, those images. And this is, I think for my, for my, um, from people from Colombia, I'm from Bogota, and when I show them those images, they don't believe that that could be hit there. Because unfortunately, this is the Savannah de Bogota, this is the place where Bogota was, was settled, and now it's absolutely covered. Those are the race fields built by the Muisca people. So in the Savannah de Bogota in Colombia, we have the same structures built in, the, in a specific way to drainage the water from those wetlands. In this case, we have wetlands that were drainage using that system of race fields. And the third scenario is uh, the third scenario is the mountains of South America. As we told you before, the first case is this one. This is the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, Teyuna. This is the name, the ancient name of the place. It was more. Is, it is well known by Ciudad Perdida. Maybe you have heard a little bit about of it. And they use a technology that is in some way different from the technology used in the central Andes in Peru. Because what they do here in this specific case, this is the, this is, I'm going to show you the location of this place. This is Colombia. This is the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, which is an independent uh, geographical or mountain system from the Andes. This is not the same formation. And this is the highest mountain a snowed mountain in the world. This is five, maybe five, uh, 500, uh, no, 5,800 meters. And I don't know in foot, sorry, but it's a very high mountain and just near to the, to the Caribbean Sea. So that's, sorry, this is the location of Teyuna or Ciudad Perdida. This is the location of Pueblito, Chairama. This is another example I'm going to show you because all this coast were full of settlements from Tairona people. This is the settlement of Teyuna. This is the uh, Eje Central or the central sector, the images I showed you before. And what they do here is a very, uh, it's a very interesting si uh, solution they use because in this case, what they need was to evacuate water. And what they do is to use the uh, structures of circulation, uh, 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 stairs and pathways to evacuate water. They don't have here channels in this uh, specific case. They have channels which crosses this. For, for instance, those are channels which crosses those settlements. But the way to evacuate water is to use all those uh, path, paths and stairs to bring water to those rivers which surrounded the place. So here we have the structures. 
the structures are the construction, the construction and the technological uh, um, issues are different from the from the things uh, the people uh, did in Peru. Because, for instance, in this case, they use those stones here to protect, in some way, these uh, terrace, this wall of the terrace, uh, from the water that comes from this place. Because they create uh, some kind of isolation. Water falls and not comes uh, straight to this part of the wall. And as, as you can see, this is a um, pretty amazing work, plastic work in some way, how they create all those uh, elements to make uh, the water system flow constantly in the case of, of water. This is other, other uh, stairs. Those are different cases of uh, stairs, which links very well with the shapes of those uh, of those terraces, those are the elements I'm telling you about that creates uh, that doesn't allow that the water comes straight to or over to this to this from this over this wall. Those are the structures. This is other case. This is uh, pueblito that they use the same technology. This is the this is the town uh, that I show you that is by the coast. And here we have the case, the specific case of Cusco, because as far as you can see at the exhibition, the great transformation that Incas did in the valley was the way how they redesigned the complete environment in the case of, of, the, of the Cusco Valley. This is the Sacred Valley. Uh, this is the Urubamba River that was channeled by Inca people. Those are the amazing terraces built by them. I use those photographs to illustrate that they really changed the, con the, 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 the form, they really transformed the environment. This is, for instance, uh, Ollantaytambo. This is the sanctuary, this is the town, and, those, and this is the system of terraces built by them, by the Inca people. This is Pisac, Chinchero, Cusco. when we see the size of the terraces they built. All those examples we are, are going to help us to understand what were the dynamics followed by Incas to transform all this uh, space during uh, what we think that was a Pachacutic um, work. So here we have Cusco. Here we have the main features we can we are we're allowed to document and we put that in this single um, document, in the single map, because we understand that Cusco is more than this ceremonial center, it's bigger, it takes all the valley with the settlements and the system of terraces, the system of agricultural terraces here, for instance, and all the water system. That, that is the, or this is the condition of the valley during the Pleistocene. The, the um, Cusco Valley is a valley from, uh, from, um, glacier, from glacier origin. So when the glacier melt, it led this, uh, this, this system of lakes. And once this part of the valley erode, the water goes out and then it remains the system of wetlands that is model led the system that Inca people found when they arrived to the valley. When they arrived to the valley, they found that there were different uh, streams that comes from top of the mountains and feed this lagoon. And when they decide was to dry that lagoon to allow, uh, to amp to, uh, make more space for agriculture. So they rectified the courses of the rivers. They create this artificial channel here in order to evacuate waters out of the valley. So here you have, those are the remains of those um, channels. This is the place, this is Aizawaman. We are looking from this place up, um, here, down, and we are going to continue to Cusco, in Cusco direction. This is, this is the same channel. And 
this is the entrance of this channel, this is the Choquichaca River, into Cusco, into Cusco City. So what we have here is uh, by the middle of the 20th century, they decide to cover those channels, but if we look to this, to this, um, I know what you are, I know what it is, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> in English, but uh, what you see is that the walls are uh, still, the Inca walls built to evacuate the waters from the top of that mountain. And this is the, sa this is the same in the case of Sapir River, we were talking about before Saizawaman, the river that comes. This is the Choquichaca to Yumayu River. And in the, in the case of Sapi River, it's the same thing. And we have this one, this river too, that is the Chunchumayu River. What I mean is they really, uh, they really changed or really rectified the course of those rivers in order to create a specific condition to settle the city here. This is the main channel they built. This is the Watanai River, but it's not exactly a river, but it's a channel built that really cut this hill. As far as we can see, we they cut the hill and take the water down. Because uh, if this river were natural, the natural position must be by the axis of the of the um, of the body. But they take the river to the south of the body to in order to drainage all those lands from there. Uh, I got this, uh, this image because when we think about water in the, in the case of Cusco, I think uh, that is something that could be related with any other case in any uh, other circumstances we have talked about. And what I mean is they don't uh, change the environment without having in mind that they have to sacralize, I'm so sorry, I didn't know, okay, to sacralize those interventions in the landscape. Is that, for instance, in the case of Cusco, we are talking about two topographical um, unities. This one is related with Saizawaman, so this is the continuation of this hill until this place, and the other one is this one that is more flat, so what they do is, this is Hatun Romijok, uh, that is, sorry, this is Hatun Romijok, this one here, and we are talking about is they really do something special, and it was to, through this, this was th those are the walls, these walls here, and what they do was to use those huge rocks here to sacralize the intervention in this specific place of Cusco. And even more, they have here some uh, springs they have to sacralize too, and they have that complete system of rocks and uh, springs which were covered by that amazing wall I showed you before that justifies this platform here that is the Hatun Romijok, the Gran Roca, the big rock platform here. So if we go out the ceremonial center, we find that the experiences around the modeling of the land and the channeling of water uh, still continues. This is the case of San Blas. They have to remodel all the topography in this place. Those are the remains of the, of the, um, of the paths we found now. Those are the agricultural terraces that now are covered by, uh, by constructions. And here we have something very good and very, very, very amazing to you that they have this system. This is the Antisuyu um, road. And it links several uh, special landmarks in the geography, in the sacred geography of Cusco. This is a Pantiana Huaca. This is this path that takes you to this system that is Pachatosa, this Pachatosa Huaca. And if we continue this system linked, this, uh, this, uh, this Huaca system, this sacralization of, um, of water, this is, for instance, the situation right now. This is why we, have, we were very lucky to find those pictures from the 1956 flight that show us 
the situation before the expansion of the city that allowed us to identify terraces, water channels, and the system of uh, the, those rocks sacralized in order to make possible use this land for agriculture or for, setting, for settlements. This is this waka, this is Wairaponko waka, that is still in use. People keep continue uh, bringing, uh, uh, keep bringing uh, offers, cocoa offers and different things to this place. And the drainage of the wetland and the crop fields around Cusco. That photography show us that there are some specific traces of the Inca terraces here and the channels which serve to drainage this water to and take it to the Watanay River. So this is what we have, it's a very complex system of terraces. This is the Watanay River. This is the hydraulic system Incas used to drainage this water from top of the mountain and from the base of the body. Here we have, the I'm sorry, the first one was, it was the, um, the roads. This one, is, this one is the terraces. And this is the complete system linked to the ceremonial center of the city. Here we have the terraces that are uh, still in use in Cusco. Those are the terraces, those ones here is in the zone of San Jerónimo. The expansion of the city is threatening those, these amazing trays of terraces here. We have here more in detail. We have underlined the Inca terraces in red and the new uh, plot uh, layout from colonial or e and republican, republican times. Here you have the remains of those, of those uh, terraces that are uh, still in use. This is, for instance, an Inca road that crosses that system. And the system of channels that is uh, still working and um, irrigating those fields. And it's pretty amazing to see that they intentionally, for instance, block this channel because there is a special way and a special time of the day they are allowed to uh, use the water. So some, some time, some, in some moment of the day, the water should or have to go down, and in other moment they change, and they can divert this water in this direction to irrigate other crop fields. So those are the remains of this amazing system. This is, for instance, this is an Inca channel that is being rebuilt, of course, but it's an Inca channel. And here you have the whole system with all the complexity that uh, shows this image. Finally, the, what we have is that for the construction of the Inca city that we more or less now can identify here, Inca people first of all change or transform the way how water crosses this, this, uh, this, this surface. So, and then after these changes, they have to create a very specific system of terraces which contains and reshape the form of the Saisawa Man Hill, for instance, with the sacralization of those specific, specific features in the landscape, keeping the traces of ancient uh, features of this place before. This is, for instance, a Kilke wall that is in this place and um, Inca people continue, they keep this way, this road that is the Antisuyu road. They, of course, they have to create this special place for the ceremonial uh, exponate or Colpata Plaza. And in the redesign, they linked different features before the Inca come here. This is, for instance, the uh, Temple of the Sun the Coricancha, and this is Aizawaman that they linked to this path now called uh, Puma Curco. It is something like the um, spine of the Puma. And this is 
other way here we have for instance the amazing wall of Loreto Street here we have the complete design how they redesign re reshape the whole topography and something that we think that is a very complete and, and a complex um, transformation of the city that must be think in like a unit something that we have to continue with those traces in, in white there are other system of terraces and settlements that we have to continue uh, we are trying to reconstruct to in order to give a complete image of how this valley looks uh, during Inca time so this is all thank you so much this is the publication we have about ur the urbanismo of Inca Cusco is in Spanish and this is the Setopan Seminario de Topografía Antigua this is our research group and the University of Tarragona here you have all the information you can download the book uh, you have access of all that information so thank you so much for, for your attention <laughs> and I have I think I have the video of the reconstruction of Cusco um, just to maybe a minute or something like that just to show you the model and uh-huh yes <coughs> yes that what that what I want to show in this uh, in this video is to uh, that the reconstruction of a city of Cusco is not an easy task task because first of all we don't really have much uh, uh, to to say how every complex of this city how it was before uh, but fortunately and those images I have before about different system of terraces in Chinchero, in Pisac, uh, Huchuy Costco help us to understand the topography of the place and some places like Machu Picchu or Rakchi or help or the same Pisac help us to understand or to propose <coughs> uh, an image of the uh, architecture in this in this specific case. We have we are lucky in some way that Incas used um, a model that is was the cancha, which allowed us to propose that some kind uh, some of those um, complexes could be in the form of those canchas. The the form of the buildings is quite similar in, in, in different in, in several cases so it helped us to produce this image in order to approach the, for the first time how was Cusco in Incatay. Thank you again. You have to clap again. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Many of the modern channels that were built, they were built over, over the indigenous uh, channels. Oh, the, the two, today's channels. Two days. The ones that you see there, they, they are actually on top of old channels. Um, mm. This is why, this is something that uh, really, um, in well, uh, I say, uh, wait a minute, I don't know how to this Insurance, yes, maybe. That these experiences of changing the environment really was so powerful that it has to continue even the new systems, political or social system that, that comes. That in the case of Cusco, you have seen is mm -hmm. something like yeah, they are, they very they similar. I, I, don't know if, I, I don't know the details, but some people told me that it was the best place to put the champs. That's why they, but, uh, but I'm not sure. I mean, this is uh, no, it must be. It must be. But, yeah. uh, but there are some of them are, yeah, many of them, actually all of them, I think, are on top of the champs. Yes, I, w I was in Colombia last, last week, and I was talking to someone about ancient uh, pathways and they are trying to people from the government keep the, uh, the indigenous people to, to, to keep in shape those, ch those, those ways mm -hmm. and they, they ask why they want we keep in shape those because those are not important we are not going to see them and the matter is those pathways are the same way to arrive to some places mm -hmm. 
not even the, 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 the roads now or path routes, no, no, no. Just those, those paths are the best way to arrive to some places. So this is, this is something related to how they build the things, how they build the channels, because this is the, the right place. The landscape, the landscape can tell what is the best strategy to, to do that. Yes. Uh, a photo from the past, and, and I feel that I wanted to almost ask oh. at that point, but I didn't want to interrupt. On the floor plains, the um, floor plains maybe? You're talking about Bogota. Okay, Bogota. Uh, that was, that was, that were, uh, that was ancient, oh. but now disappeared. Oh, it's not there. Yeah, it's not there because the city has covered those, those oh. race fields. I don't really think it could be even underneath because they have built they over. They level. So the, yeah, they maybe they level or uh, those are very um, delicate uh, structures for saying something because since they are like this, like uh, they have to bulldoze. Yes, to uh, cover or to <coughs> plane every yeah. every level. Yeah. level the surface. Yes, thank you. Level the surface. So unfortunately, I think. More of them must be disappear. And they're having big floods when there rains there now. Yes, <laughs> this is the matter. They have big floods because before the system was, was the natural system was to, uh, to the wetlands where something like buffers, which, uh, which avoid that those lands could be, could be flood. But now even the wetlands have disappeared, so it's a very, very big problem they have there, yes. Thank you so much. No, thank you. <laughs>